Hey everybody, Cody Nelson here at Cover Crop Kings. Just wanted to bring you a summer update on some stuff. Uh, we've been out checking crops, checking cows, checking pastures, and uh, we walked through some both corns and bean, corn and beans this morning. Um, give you a little bit of an update from out here in West Central Minnesota. We were pretty fortunate on, on a little bit of our ground uh, yesterday, uh, last night. Uh, we were able to pick up a couple inches of rain. That has not been the case widespread. As a matter of fact, we're very, very fortunate um, that, it, that it did happen right there where it did, uh, where, where we definitely needed it. But, but in, I would say, a majority of our ground, just like everybody else, we're still in a severe drought. Uh, we've not had very much rain uh, all spring since, and we didn't have a lot of snow going into it. So I want to bring you a couple different ideas, uh, some some different drought um, management tools maybe. I want you to think positive on this. This is not easy. Um, we're gonna have to stay somewhat, uh, I hate the word cheap, but, but just give you a few different ideas on some things that I think might make sense. So one thing I wanna touch on, I'm gonna show you a little bit here. I, I wanna, first off, before I show you what it looks like, I wanna explain it a little bit. This is the very front of, of one of our pastures. This area gets beat up severely. Um, we have to bring the cattle back up here to get water. So this that is why this area uh, gets, it, when it's this dry, generally we don't have to, but, but we are letting them come back up here. Uh, we're about ready to strip off part of this and, and just make sure, just lock them out of it and build the lane just so this stuff has a chance to recover. I can tell you a few years ago, we went through a really dry June and July. Um, I remember early in August, we got a rain, uh, it was an inch of rain, and then we planted something. And then three, uh, about three or four days later, we got another shot of rain. And I think that's when this wet cycle started. So we were pretty fortunate there. But what, even if we would have just got that second rain, uh, we saw a lot of abundant growth. I want to talk about what we did, but first I'm going to show you what this looks like. So this is brown. Here's kind of a lane that uh, the honeybee guy drives through. I don't like that, but that it is what it is. This area is just beat up. So I want to tell you, uh, it's brown, it's fried, it's sandy, it's light. We're in uh, just outside of Granite Falls. So basically there's a little bit of soil that blew on top of a piece of granite and we got a pasture. Um, and then down the bottom, there's some cattails. You can see it's green. The green is cattails. Cows uh, found uh, some excitement in that because it was something green. So what we did here is we, and I wish, I wish I'd have pulled the cows off of this a little bit um, earlier or got them locked off. And, and we'll, we'll basically run a lane through the cattails to get back to the back paddock so we can let this part kind of recover. But we came in here and we planted a bunch of stuff with the no-till drill, just just one pass through. And I mean, we did oats, um, we did rye, we did annual rye grass. I did some brassicas. I don't think I would do that again. We did some clovers, and I saw some strips. You can. This was several years ago. I'll get you here uh, to to one of these strips, but but you can still see today some of the clover coming back. And if you see in this, there's some there's some rows of clover right there. That'll still come back. Actually, earlier on, I seen we also we'd also seeded some perennial grasses. So it's a good time to interseed some grass. You got a dry um, seed bed or a dry dormant grass. Uh, might be a good time if you wanted to try and uh, interseed some warm season sorghums, uh, warm season grasses. Uh, I guess all sorghums are warm season. So anyways, uh, if you, if you, now's the time to go out and plant something. Um, 
you want to try something it is really really hard once you get once you get your sod and your soil uh, functioning the way you want to it's really hard to get a good establishment in a normal year uh, of any kind of annuals it's also really hard to say ah, i think i want to run a drill through that ground trying to introduce some more um, improved varieties of grasses and other forages uh, other legumes maybe and and whatnot some forbs but but this is a good opportunity to do it everything's wide open when it rains will it green up you bet it will but it, it's it's only going to come back so much and plant something out there so you can get it to grow uh, you don't need to get fancy it doesn't need to be expensive um i'm up here in central minnesota i'm gonna say you know we're still in late june i actually think i'd do a mix of cool and warm seasons um i don't know that i'd do a cool season that's gonna mature out fast like oats this time of year maybe if you waited till the first part of august you could do that i'm actually thinking my mix might look something like uh, uh sorghum sedan and annual ryegrass to start out with i would i think there's some room for some legumes there's some room for some brassicas, but the brassicas are not going to do as well uh, once that grass starts to green back up if we do ever get some rain. And that isn't if. There's no guarantees there's going to be rain here this year yet. Um, the forecast doesn't necessarily look all that great for any more. Um, the, the ones that have came have came and been extremely spotty and most of the time pretty small and not very, I mean, not very abundant in terms of the amount of moisture. I just want to get something out here in case it does grow let's produce some forage let's do something to extend some grazing do something to build some soil health so so take some advantages there in your crop fields what can you do um if you're looking for grazing this is going to be an opp opportunity um to you're definitely going to be taking chances but it's not going to be at any risk to your cash crop um look at the corn out there a lot of it's curled up a lot of it's been pineappled for several days in a row and just going to continue that way we're the corn's actually in a lot of parts of the midwest right now is going backwards and actually you get out east it's actually just too wet but but let's talk stick with the drought uh preserve idea how can we how can we make lemons uh lemonade out of lemons here uh, look at what's going to happen even if it does start to rain that corn's not going to get very tall um we're not going to have you know if you're chopping it for silage it's not going to be it's not going to be as tall as normal um it, no matter what you're doing so i want to give you a couple different ideas there so one idea that i had thought about doing in some corn that just really was starting to look really really bad re very drought stressed i was actually thinking if, if you were going to chop go in with an interseeder and get some forage sorghum interseeded into that try that um i'm not sure how how your crop insurance is going to handle that if you've got it uh, but anyways, talk with your crop insurance agent before you do it. Um, they might give you some ideas. They might send the adjuster out right now and get that taken. I don't know what they're going to do. That's none of my business. Just giving you some things to think about if you need to try and find a way to make some more feed. Um, otherwise, fly on oats, um, annual ryegrass. The, they're brassicas. When that corn's let's say that corn's going to be half to two-thirds the height of normal um even when it does start to rain it's not just going to throw a bunch of height on so you're not going to get those that drought stress corn that's been drought stressed through most most of june is not going to get that tall there's going to be sunlight hitting the ground if it does rain let's make sure we got something there to capture the rain capture some sunlight and grow some feed uh fix your soil health help with fixing soil health I'm not in a situation right now where I'm saying, you know what, let's go throw um, 20 things out there. I always think that's a benefit, and, and I think if you can keep your cost down, that's a good idea. But let's focus on some things that we know can work, and and we we got to get rain, obviously, but but that way we've got something there. So so when it comes time to uh, harvesting the crop that is there. Um, maybe I've, I've heard some talk about the possibility of, of grazing some of this corn off that in the fall, um, or, or even into winter, we may have to, uh, we're going to have to look at some alternative things. Cause I know some of the, the grass that we've been, uh, uh, partners, I should say, have been cutting, uh, 
20 to 25% yield of, of normal or average. So there's gonna be a shortage of hay. They've not in, in a large a large part of the United States have not opened out up um, haying for CR, of CRP and, and some of these other conservation easement programs. So that's probably gonna come, but it's not there yet. And, and there's a big shortage of pasture and haying around. So, so especially for you livestock producers, make sure you're thinking about some options. Now's the time to be thinking. Now's the time to get the seed out there. It's gonna be fine sitting in dry dirt, dry soil. It's going to be okay. Nothing's gonna grow if you don't plant it. Um, I was gonna plant something yesterday. I decided yesterday morning, I decided not to and we got two inches of rain. I'm just kicking myself for not doing it. But you know what, we're still gonna go plant, have some, have a little bit of faith. You know what, God's good, he's gonna take care of us. So um, get something out there. We'll get a little rain, um, have a little faith in that. Don't spend too much money, don't break the bank, but there's some cheap options out there. Uh, if you've got any questions on, on mixes or anything like that, uh, I'd say shoot me an email uh, at soilrx1 at gmail.com and I can you know maybe try to help you out if I can uh, I always try to get back with people when they contact so um, do my best anyways but hey we want to help you guys out that's all we're looking to do we just want we just want want you guys to make it through nobody nobody enjoys a drought I've always said I'd rather have too much rain than not enough uh, I'll tell you the cows look phenomenal they always do in a dry year. The calves are doing really well. We're very fortunate that we've been working on this system for several years. Uh, we still have not touched over 65% of our pastures yet. We have not gotten through them. Uh, normally we would uh, be through them all the way already. We kinda, I was starting to get worried about this coming. So what we did is, is we started grazing all kinds of different stuff around our place and, and and just slowed things down a bunch. So normally you wanna get through stuff fast. Uh, this year we might've just been super lucky and we slowed everything down, we stayed off of stuff. And and I mean, some of this stuff doesn't look all that great that we're going on to now, but it's at least tall, there's forage out there. And it's, if nothing else, it's shade, shading the ground. Uh, we're, we're gonna get through most of it. So we're going to take this year and, and take the advantage of, of the opportunity to get some stuff replanted. We could have a conversation about the latent seed bank, but I'm here to tell you um, there's some major advantages to some of these improved varieties. So don't be afraid. Don't be bashful to add some new stuff, some new perennials. If you're running the drill out there, um, I would I would urge you to add a little bit you've already got a grass stand established but add a new endophyte free tall fescue or add some orchard grass or add something uh that, that might benefit you add a little bit of a lot of stuff you know in, in terms of the perennials that might make a lot of sense to get some new forbs out there get some things you don't have growing in your pasture take advantage of the 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 more affordable annuals to get them planted um, and, and those will respond to a little bit of rain much faster than your perennials will. So as a matter of fact, your perennials, you may not even notice those perennials out here until the next dry spell. Um, I always, I, in this one for the last several years now, since we did that, I see the drill marks where we, where we, where we seeded those perennials. So I know they're there. Uh, we see improved forage quality uh, in that. So they don't last as long as what's in the latent seed bank, what's native. Uh, that's for sure. You may have to do it more often, but I think it's a uh, price well paid. So just a few ideas, uh, maybe not perfect in everybody's situation, but just wanted to give you a few ideas that we're going to do. Another thing that we're going to do, we've got some wooded uh, species. We've got some buckthorn. We've got some snowberry. Uh, there's some other stuff, uh, the famous cedar tree. Uh, we've got some of those things. So we are going to also potentially um, do a little bit of mowing. Um, behind the cows with some of that i i i would love in this pasture specifically i'd love to be able to get cows out, or to bale graze out here we haven't figured out the water the winter watering system yet uh in case we don't get snow but but we're working on that then we would really focus on those areas with wooded growth but for right now uh we're looking at 
at mowing some stuff. We're kind of working from the exterior in, getting around the fences and some of that. Uh, this pasture has been grazed now after sitting idle for 17 years. Uh, we've been grazing it for 12 and we are starting to see some woody species coming up. We've never mowed it, never done any of that. Uh, we've done high density grazing, adaptive grazing, you name it, mob grazing. We've tried all of that and, and let me tell you, it works. Um, we don't, I can't get to it as often as I want to. So our paddocks are a little bigger than I would like, but, but we are, uh, working on doing some things a little bit differently all the time. So I will also always tell people the more you can move cows, the better. Um, but it's gotta be economically feasible to go and, and go through it every day. So, or, or every time, it doesn't matter if it's every day, every hour, every three days. If you did it twice as much as you did last year, you're gonna improve. So anyways, that's enough on that. Um, also, uh, don't beat up your pasture. You know, this this area, don't do this. If you can, uh, can afford not to or can find a way around it, this is not what I want people to, to do. Uh, that's why we're gonna get a fence around here. And you can see we've got some of that snowberry starting to come up, the green stuff out here, so we're gonna get some of that taken care of. But anyways, that's where we're at. Uh, make sure you share the video. We just want to get this out. If you haven't already subscribed, you know, feel free to do that. We, we want to make sure you get all these videos. So uh, hang in there, stay cool, stay hydrated. Um, pray for some rain. Pray for rain for everybody. Pray for rain for your neighbor. Um, you know, just hang in there and it's all going to be all right. And, and it always is. We're all still here. So, um, uh, keep uh keep just think positive get some seed out there and and plan on uh plan on making some new forage okay you guys have a great day uh we'll stay in touch if you got any questions comment i already gave you the email uh have a good one talk to you soon